What's up ghosts? Thank you for clicking on my video. If you are enjoying these videos and would like to see more of them with higher quality and better educational value, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can learn how to become an integral part of this channel and personally support your favorite paranormal researcher. That's me. Let's get into it. Catch me howling at the moon. Everyone has seen the Patterson Gimlin footage of Bigfoot. It's been studied, torn apart by skeptics, raised up by believers, and scrutinized in just about every way conceivable. And it's hard to find someone who doesn't have an opinion on it in one way or another. But did you know that there are other videos out there comparable to the Patterson-Gimlin footage? In just a few moments, I'll be breaking down three of some of the most compelling videos ever taken of Bigfoot, sans Patty herself. And if you're a skeptic, I want to hear your thoughts because my ultimate goal is to consider all avenues of information and get to the truth of whether or not there really is a small, elusive population of Sasquatch roaming the world. Comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on the matter. But maybe after watching these three videos, you might just have a change of heart. But who knows? The first one I'm going to analyze is very interesting, but all three are pretty amazing in their own right. So make sure you like this video, subscribe, and watch till the end. Number one, Miss Independent. This first one is remarkable in a lot of ways. It's got a mysterious origin, mired in controversy, and also depicts not only an incredibly clear shot of Bigfoot, but also of a juvenile. And upon first viewing, I know what you're going to think, but before you jump on the it's a suit bandwagon, wait until I present some of the most compelling parts of this video. Now, it should be noted that the original source is unknown, but the consensus online is that it was originally taken July 4th, 2010, in either the woods of California or Kentucky. Take a look. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room, or the Bigfoot in the wood. There is a scattered thought on the internet that this is the product of a prominent Bigfoot researcher named Leroy Blevins, who unfortunately has recently passed away. That said, Leroy has left an incredibly interesting legacy. He has published works on the JFK assassination and Bigfoot, but he isn't your typical conspiracy theorist. One thing that sets him apart is that although he believes in Bigfoot, claiming to have seen one personally, he adamantly states that the famous Patterson footage was hoaxed. This isn't your typical Bigfoot enthusiast's go-to, and in a way, it somewhat legitimizes his claims, since it appears he isn't just unimpeachably driving an agenda at all costs. He believes Patty is a hoax so much that he openly created a suit to show that you could make one that fits Patty's MO. Enter the 2010 Independence Day Bigfoot. The primary argument against this video is that a particular body part appears to be very similar to the known Blevins suit. It's Bigfoot's butt. <laughs> Skeptics point out that Blevins suit right here has an exaggerated butt, and this Bigfoot also has an exaggerated butt. Look at that butt comparison. So does Bigfoot's butt really give this away? Well, I'm not so sure. Blevin refuted on multiple occasions that he was responsible for the Independence Day Bigfoot film. Also, even though his suit looks pretty good, it's still obvious that it's a suit and not a genuine, living, breathing Bigfoot. One argument put forth by YouTuber ThinkerThunker claims that the smoking gun for a genuine Bigfoot sighting as opposed to a human in a suit is the gait of the Bigfoot itself. Specifically, it's knee thrusting motion as it walks. The idea is simple. A human walking regularly 
and even a person in a suit does not produce the knee thrusting effect seen here. In fact, he claims there is a full 20 degree difference between any hoaxed Bigfoot leg lift and the genuine thing. And this appears to be the genuine thing. Please check out his video about that for more in-depth analysis he's done on the idea of knee thrusting. Links in the description. I was really on the fence about this one until I saw this right here. It appears there is a genuine blink. A blink which Blevin's suit would, would be unable to produce. And unless you've got animatronics in your suit, this observed, although subtle motion, is not possible. It's really hard to see at first, but there it is. I'm hoping you'll be able to see this clearly upon upload. Because once you see it, it's hard not to see it ever again. That looks like genuine facial movement. And some have even argued that this motion right here is a kiss. <laughs> and finally, the juvenile itself. What an incredible hoaxer to not only have an amazing suit, but to also have the foresight to use a puppet in this production. But again, there appears to be independent movement coming from the juvenile that wouldn't easily be accomplished with the puppet. Balancing its head here, and pushing away from its caregiver and so forth. Given all this, I don't believe that this is a suit, especially not Blevins suit. Because other than the exaggerated butt, I don't think it is all that similar. I think this very well could be genuine, and as such, one of the most incredible pieces of evidence for the existence of Bigfoot to date. It's the 21st century Patterson footage. That said, I have to admit that some incredible hoaxers could be responsible. I just think it's unlikely. I'm not going to give it a 10, but I'm going to give it the highest rating I've given anything on this show so far. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 on the scale of believability. A couple follow-up points to wrap this one up. One of the reasons people think this might have been filmed in Kentucky is because that's where Leroy Blevins lived. Is there anyone watching from Kentucky that might be able to identify whether or not this was actually filmed there? Please comment down below and let me know. And finally, there are several links from people analyzing this video to the supposed original source, but when you click the link, it isn't available and the channel isn't made known. That said, I have been able to trace this unavailable video back to a YouTube channel called Bigfoot Evidence. This channel, which hosts an array of Bigfoot sightings, uploaded this video on February 5th, 2013, which is the earliest upload date I can find. And for some reason, then either deleted the video or just made it unavailable. I don't believe they are the original source, but they potentially could know who the source was. I have reached out to them, I have not heard back, but it is my belief that they know where this came from and that information could shed a whole new light on this story. So let's see if we can't get Bigfoot evidence to reveal where they got this video from. I think that would be great. We should all head over to their channel and ask them about it. <laughs> hey, but hey, I'm, hey, I'm looking at you. These next two Sasquatch videos are also really amazing, but also I wanna give you an in-video shout out in the next video that I upload. I will shout out the first five people to do three things. Number one, like this video. Number two and three, keep watching to find out. <laughs> I've, I've sold my soul to the algorithm. This, this is what this looks like. Number two, the skunk ape. Regarded as definitive proof of Sasquatch by Bigfoot researcher Bigfoot Tony, the following, filmed by hunter Joshua Highcliffe along the Mississippi River near Tunica, Mississippi, shows what many have come to call the skunk ape. Take a look.
Some have speculated that this is a black bear, but I really don't believe that to be the case. And a suit appears to be somewhat ruled out because of the sheer strength that this creature is exhibiting. And that strength is apparent right here when it's literally tearing this tree apart, probably looking for grubs or other types. I mean, just look at this thing. It's just enthralled in this tree. It's probably eating dinner. And the crazy thing is, it looks like it could be a family affair. It looks like there is a juvenile clinging to the primary subject's back. Where, you ask? Well, it's hard to see at first, and at the risk of being the victim of pareidolia, I'm going to share this with you and just let you make your own decision. Playing with the color on this clip, it starts to become somewhat clear that there is something off, odd, or just strange on the primary creature's back. And whatever it is, it looks to move independently from the regular mat on its back. Right here, look at that. Then there is a head movement right here of the potential juvenile. Now, okay, I'm not going to say that there is certainly a juvenile. It could just kind of look like there could be, but taking into consideration this thing is genuinely tearing this tree apart, I don't believe in the least that this is a suit. It looks like an, a genuine animal. That said, before I rate this one, I do need to address something else, and this could be a sign of a potential deception. But I really don't know what to make of it. I just want to do my due diligence and make you guys aware. Credit goes out to Redditor Barry Spencer for this find. It turns out that if you Google search Josh Highcliffe, obviously his YouTube channel shows up. And it should be noted that this is the only video on his channel, but there is nothing else. If you Facebook him, you'll find a bare bones Joshua Highcliffe account. And this isn't all that odd, but what is odd is that it appears this account became active the same day the Skunk Ape video was uploaded to YouTube. And again, that might not be all that odd. However, this banner photo isn't taken by Josh. It was taken by Christine Karim in 2004. How do I know that? Because it appears on the Mississippi River Wikipedia page. If you try to play out a scenario of how and why all of this could be the way it is, it's not a huge leap to think the following could occur. Somebody hoaxed a Bigfoot sighting, didn't want their personal info slash name to be associated with it, created a burner Facebook page so there would be something associated with the fake name, and not wanting to put a lot of effort into it, just searched for Mississippi River images and swiped this random one from Wikipedia to try to make it look legit, and hoped it would all work out. And to add even more evidence to this theory, this photo was taken at Lake Itasca in Minnesota, over a thousand miles away from Tunica, Mississippi, where the alleged skunk ape was filmed and close to where Josh Highcliffe supposedly lives in South Haven, Mississippi. Also, there is no other info about this person anywhere that I can find. This Facebook page does kind of look like a fake page and we are fairly confident that it is the same Joshua Highcliffe because the Skunk Ape video was uploaded October 28th, 2013 and the Facebook account was created, or at least this first banner photo of the swiped Itasca Lake was uploaded the exact same day. So if it's real, then it's amazing. And if it's a hoax, then props to the person who pulled it off. That said, anyone who could hoax something this well, in my opinion, would have done a better job with the Facebook account. My final rating of believability of this one is a seven out of 10. Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Hey, just in time for step number two to get a shout out in my next video. All you have to do is watch the next final breakdown of this legendary white Sasquatch caught on film and vote right here whether or not you believe this final one is real. Number three, Sasquatch the White. If real, this final one could be the closest anyone has ever gotten to a Sasquatch while catching it on film. And what's more is that it is the incredibly rare white Bigfoot. The person that uploaded this video, Christian E, states that the original source has yet to reveal his identity, but the information we have about it states that this was filmed in Carbondale, Pennsylvania, December 29th, 
2009. Take a look. What was that? Okay, my analysis of this is pretty brief. There's just a couple things I want to point out. The primary argument against this is that there is absolutely no eye shine or reflection in the eyes at all. The eyes are just pitch black, and that would make sense if it was a mask. But I just want to point this out. I can't say for sure, but it does kind of look like this creature blinks, and his mouth moves right here and here. And if there really is movement in the face, then it would make this unlikely that this is a mask. But I'm just not entirely sure this is genuine movement and not just a trick of the light and a blur effect combining to create the illusion. It is really hard to see, literally just making up a, a couple frames of subtle movement. That said, let's for a moment just entertain the idea that this was real. Look at how funny this is. This thing is genuinely trying to hide its entire frame behind a, a tree that is narrower than himself, and he's even holding his arms behind his back to make himself look smaller, which is just hilarious to me. But then again, if this is a suit, somehow, this isn't like any suit we've ever seen. And I just want to make clear that these are examples of what you can buy online for Bigfoot slash gorilla suits. Just saying that when people say it's a suit, you should know that it's not as simple as buying one of these things off of Amazon and getting your buddy to film you in the woods. There are tons of those videos out there online and they all look just ridiculous. Anything that is even remotely realistic has to be made by professional costume designers would take a lot of time and money and even then there are oftentimes obvious giveaways. Not saying that it can't be done, just saying it's not as easy to be convincing as people might think. So my rating of this one, I'm gonna give a six out of 10, but I wanna hear your thoughts. Vote right here and let me know if you think this is real or not. Hey, so my goal is to get 50 subscribers. I've got 20 right now, so if you'd like that in-video shout-out, be one of the first five people to do these three steps. Step one, like this video. Step two, vote right here on whether or not you believe this Sasquatch the White is real or not. And finally, step three, share this video and comment down below that you've done those things along with the name and message you'd like me to shout-out in my next video. Just keep it clean and brief. And finally, if you'd like more videos and better quality videos from me, consider supporting me further on Patreon. There you can become a part of the Moonlit Ghost community, which is dedicated to discovering the truth of this bizarre and beautiful world. Thank you, and may your days be long and paranormal. I'll land on the right outro one of these days. <laughs>